have USB mics finally grown up? Hi, I'm Rich Bonaduce with Top 10 Reviews, and these two desktop beauties are from Blue Microphones. The silver one is the Yeti, the black one is the Yeti Pro. They work with PCs and Macs and are iPad compatible, although they do need the high-speed USB for proper functioning since they draw a lot of power. These Yeti are identical, except that the Yeti Pro has an analog XLR 5-pin stereo output on the bottom. Now obviously they're good looking aesthetically, but they're more than just a pretty metal grill. Both are mounted to meaty metal stands that allow them to tilt. However, because the Yeti mic is so well designed and sensitive, you're likely to pick up some ambient desk noise. These grippy pads on the bottom provide some vibration isolation, but this is not a shock mount. If you want one of those, go to Blue's website and buy this custom shock mount, the Radius. The Yeti feature a threaded mic stand mount for just that purpose. Now the controls on both Yeti are the same. The front speaker side, that is the side facing you, the speaker, with the blue logo on it, has a mute button with a red activation light and a stiff, infinitely adjustable headphone monitor volume knob. On the far side of the mic housing is an adjustable gain control and a selector for the four different recording patterns. They are made possible by the three premium condenser mics arranged in a triple capsule array. The patterns available are stereo, cardioid, bi-directional, and omni. A stereo mode captures a realistic stereo recording since the Yeti picks up equal signal in the left and right channel. But if you want it in either side, simply cheat the mic to the left or the right of the sound source. That's pretty good. But what if I was doing a podcast all by my lonesome? Then cardioid would be my best choice. Sound directly in front of the microphone is picked up while the sound at the rear and sides of the microphone is not. Cardioid delivers the most direct and rich sound. But what if I have a guest? Then I would use the bi-directional setting since sound in the front and the rear is picked up. Right, Greg? That's right, Rich, and it's good to be here and sound from the sides is rejected. This is great, obviously, for an interview situation, but what if we had a bunch of people? Then the Omni mode would work best since sound is picked up equally from all directions. This setting is great for recording a conference call or a discussion with a room full of people, musicians, or any time you want the ambience to be part of the recording. So can we get back to our meeting now? No, shut up. And what a sound. The Yeti's 24-bit, 192 kilohertz recording resolution the highest digital resolution available on the market, might actually be a bit much for some applications. Blue thoughtfully provided an eighth inch headphone output on the bottom of the mic, across from the USB port. It's not only a zero latency monitoring device, but it's also a core audio output on a Mac. On a PC, a custom driver will power the input output. Now on the Yeti Pro, this is the male five pin stereo XLR out. Provided with the Pro is this Y cable to connect the Yeti Pro to a stereo pre-amplifier. Switch to stereo mode and the Yeti Pro outputs stereo audio with the left and right XLR connectors. It should be noted here that the XLR and digital modes operate separately. The Yeti Pro cannot operate in both modes at once. About the only bad thing I can say about the Yeti series of mics is that they're so good, you'll want to use them all the time, everywhere, and they're not exactly built for portability like the uh, Snowflake series. The Yeti is more than a foot tall in that stand, and it weighs about three and a half pounds. It does collapse a bit, but still. Other than that, I agree with the hype. They are the ultimate professional USB microphone and work well in a variety of settings. I'm Rich Bonaduce for Top 10 Reviews, where we did the research so you don't have to.